What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Astral Sorcery. And today we are going to be going over the Attunement Altar and how to use it to attune yourself to one of the many constellations that we discovered last episode. Now the Attunement Altar can actually be used for two different things. The first one is what I just mentioned, which is attuning yourself to one of the many bright constellations, each one coming with its own benefits, and you unlock this whole perks tree that we'll be going over, and you can really power up your character, which is awesome. It also allows you to discover dim constellations, which is going to be necessary to progress in the mod, but you can also attune different crystals using it, which we'll be going over in a future episode. The main reason that we are covering the stuff today to attune yourself is, like I said, it is necessary to discover more constellations, like we did last episode, so it's definitely something you want to do, even if for some reason you do not care about making your character super awesome and faster and stronger and all that good stuff that comes along with attuning yourself to one of these many constellations that we see right now. So, a couple things you want to make sure you've done before we hop into today's episode is basically make sure you did everything we discussed last episode, and that's going to be making sure you have all the different constellation papers in your astral tome. You want to have all five of them for the bright constellations, and then you want to make sure you either use the looking glass or the telescope to discover those five bright constellations in the starry nighttime sky, and that you're seeing them above you. Once you've done that, you should be pretty much set to go for today's episode. Uh, it is going to require that you actually have a nice, relatively large space cleared out to set up this multi-block, because much like the other altars that we've set up so far, and the ones that we will set up in the future, it's going to require a single altar block, which we're going to craft using the Starlight Crafting mechanic. But for that block to actually function, we need to set up one of these multi-blocks that goes below it, which technically I think is the real altar part. Uh, and so today, we're going to be setting up a nice... 19 by 19 by 6 at least at the biggest points it's more like a 17 by 17 by 1 uh, for the most part but there's a couple pieces that jut off of it that technically make it 19 by 19 by 6 uh, so we're gonna need a nice big area for it and also we need a lot of resources so as you can see there's something missing over here uh, we tore down the large shrine that was over here to get enough marble to actually make what we're doing today as it requires a significant amount of both regular marble and sooty marble as you will see in a couple minutes and we were running pretty low after setting up the base over here so thankfully there really isn't that much crafting to do today but we are going to get to go over some new fun stuff that'll be pretty useful both in crafting and then in setting this stuff up and most of the work is going to be actually building the extremely large multi-block that I just mentioned so if we look over in this chest right here, you can see that all the blocks that I discussed for actually assembling the multi-block of the altar are right down here. Uh, we need 225 sooty marble, 4 chiseled marble, 12 marble pillars, 80 marble arches, and 4 ruined marble. So that's where most of your time is probably going to go. Then we have up here pretty much all the stuff that we need to set up the actual attunement altar block and do the starlight crafting. But we actually are going to need, at least for this craft, one astral relay. And so you can see over here we have the materials we need for seven of them. This is going to be because we need one astral relay for actually crafting the attunement altar and then based on what constellation you want to set up you'll either need six or seven because it's going to correspond to however many stars there are in the actual constellation uh, but we're going to need them to actually determine which one we're attuning ourselves to so we'll be going over how to do that today it's pretty cool looking but the first thing that we need to do before we do any of that is going to be utilize all this stuff right here to set up a linking tool and then use that with a collection crystal from where the shrine used to be to convert this iron ore to star metal ore and then turn that into star metal ingots, which are required for crafting the attunement altar. If we look right here, you can see that we need two star metal ingots and the way you get these is from either smelting or blasting down star metal ore. And the way you get this is through starlight transmutation, which can very easily be done early on using a linking tool and simply linking the collection crystal that we work with in the shrine much like we did to make the luminous crafting table uh, to whatever we're trying to transmute. So that's actually going to be the first thing we do today. So we're just going to grab this stuff out and we'll come over to our starlight crafting altar. And you can see the linking tool actually is going to require a larger crafting grid to make. So you are going to need the starlight crafting altar. You can't get around it with the luminous crafting table. But at this point, you should probably already have this set up. So we are going to make this really quickly. And then we're going to hop on over to, unfortunately, the slightly boring looking 
shrine over there. I don't even know if I should call it a shrine anymore. Uh, it is what used to be a shrine. So we now have our linking tool. It looks pretty cool, like a fancier wand than we currently have. So we'll run over here and I couldn't bring myself to tear down this entire area down here just yet. I'm sure I will absolutely gut this area if I need even more marble as this is a super easy way to get a ton of it. Um, but I still like how it looks because we have obviously the collection crystal down here still. So what we're going to do is simply take the iron ore and you can transmute a ton of different stuff. Um, but the iron ore is going to be the main one that you want to use it for considering star metal is going to be used in a lot of different crafts. And then we're going to right click with our linking tool. It selects the collector crystal and then right click the iron ore and you can see it converts it to star metal ore, which is a really cool block. It's got a little bit of depth to it and you can see it actually has some animation to it too. So then we're just gonna do that again with this. You can see it turns that too. And then we just mine these up and we're good to go. So nothing too complicated there, but definitely something you want to have on hand since we're going to need it in future crafts too. And then we'll just come over here and we will cook down the ore right into ingots and we should be good to go then with grabbing out all the stuff that we need for crafting the astral relays so the one additional one for crafting the attunement altar itself and then the six we need for the constellation i'm doing today uh, so i am going to be doing the Visio constellation. Obviously, some of these have six stars, some of these have seven, so you might need to make eight total, um, but you're going to pick whatever constellation you want. This one, you can see it gives a brief description of what it's going to give. So it says, bathing in the rays of this constellation gives the appearance that everything is moving slower when it simply makes you faster in whatever you do. Now, there's ones that can make you have, you know, better range. There's ones that can make you hit harder. There's ones that can make you uh, tougher, have more life. So it really depends on what you want. But because we're not really fighting stuff here, I figured that having better movement speed and being a little bit faster would probably be the most useful. So we have everything we need. Now we can come over here and we'll craft the seven astral relays that we're going to need. And again, when we're crafting with the rock crystal, it's not going to matter what rock crystal we use. So you can pick whatever one you want. And oh, I forgot to grab out. That's why I was over here too. Forgot to grab out the star metal ingots. But here we go. Now we have all this stuff in here. This has a relatively high starlight requirement. So hopefully if you're not in a nice dense Fosic field, you got some spectral relay set up that we went over a couple episodes ago, but now we can start crafting this. And you can see when we start crafting things that require a ton of starlight, you get some serious animation going on here. So this is gonna take a little bit. Uh, there we go. Now we got the attunement altar. And if we come over here, I cleared out this area, it took forever because uh, we had a relatively large uh, kind of just stone pillar right in the middle here, but there's no way I was clearing out that area and there's no way I was building up over on these two sides. So we're starting out here. And like I said, it is going to be a 19 by 19 by 19. Uh, or not 19, 19 by 19 by six. So if we come in the attunement section, you can see that the starlight attunement is right here at the beginning. If we come over, we can see the craft we just did. And right after that, we can see the multi-block that we need right here. And it's a ton of sooty marble and then just a little bit of marble and some pillars around the outside. And so you can see the blocks required right here if you hover over this moving star. Just what I listed, and then if you need to see the different Y-level views, you can switch. And one important thing to note is in these corners, there is nothing below the pillars. So that's not the same as the altars we set up before, just an important thing to remember. And then we can go up and see as we you know, go up, but not it's not really that complicated. Uh, so shouldn't be too bad to set up, but that's exactly what it's gonna look like. And because we need the attunement altar right in the center, what I did is I counted out nine blocks here. And then this is the 10th block, so this is the center block right here. And then there's nine blocks over here. So it's going to, on the sides, be pressed pretty much right up against this and right up against over here. Uh, but now that we have this set up, obviously we need to start laying down, uh, if I grab the blocks at least, we need to start laying down the sooty marble as that's going to be a 15 by 15 sooty marble uh, area right around here. Okay guys, so it occurred to me that setting up a 15 by 15 of sooty marble might be a little bit boring to watch, and so instead of having you guys listen to me ramble, I decided I would just build this off camera, get it all set up right here, so I did not place 225 blocks 
boringly on camera, but now we can finish outlining this and place down the minimal amount of blocks that are left. So we're going to start with the marble arches and we're just gonna take all 80 of them and we're going to line each side of this. And then when we get to the corners, all we're going to do is leave this block empty and simply build this little three by three sort of at the corner that's going to incorporate it. So if we open up the astral tome, you can see just like that. So now we can continue building along the side right here and we'll do the same thing at all the other corners. And remember that we don't actually need any block in this space right here. So not like the other altars we set up where it was really important you remembered what block needed to go there. Uh, this one, there's actually nothing, which is definitely nicer. Um, but now we go over here and we can finish it off. So there we go, we have all those set up. Now we're just going to be putting down the ruined marble, the marble pillars, and topping those off with chiseled marble. So we'll put that down, and then we'll go one, two, three, and then we gotta make our way up there. I probably should have had an extra block of cobblestone so we could actually get up there. Give me a couple of these extra bad boys so we can get up there. And we can put down the final chiseled marble. So there, that pillar is done. We can run around and do the other ones. So just like that, ruined marble on the bottom, three pillars, and then a chiseled on top. I think this looks pretty nice, honestly. I'm pretty excited to build around this and incorporate it more into the base. Obviously, it's not pressed up directly against it, but it's pretty darn close. So I think it should be a nice addition. And you guys seem to like sort of the theme of the base, and obviously this goes along with it. Well... You know, the base is obviously using up all the important blocks that we need uh, to actually construct these things. So there we go, and chiseled marble right on top. So this should be fully assembled, and the way you can tell it is, is by these particles that are being emitted now in the sooty marble. So I think this looks really cool. Obviously, it's just going to consistently stay like this, even during the daytime, so it adds a nice little effect to it. But... Now what we need to do is actually start setting this up to utilize it to tune ourselves to whatever constellation we picked. And as I said to you guys, that was going to be, if we go to the constellations page, for me, Visio. Now this one again requires six different stars, so it's going to require six astral relays because we're basically going to map out the exact constellation we want in this huge area of sooty marble with the idea based on the mod that it helps filter out all the other constellations as sooty marble is really good at doing that and only utilize the energy from the one you specify. Now the way you do this is you are going to pull out whatever constellation paper corresponds to the constellation that you want to uh, attune yourself to. And then when you hold this, and I guess we should probably make it nighttime so this actually works, uh, thankfully, again, we have the comforts mod, so we can hang out in our hammock over here, and we should be good to go with it being nighttime. Uh, but you're going to grab out your constellation paper, and at night, if you are holding this, it is going to show different purple markings on here, which are going to be where you place down your different astral relays to form the constellation. Because obviously, they're not gonna expect you to know where to put all these down, all these different stars, to actually mimic the constellation. So as it progressively becomes more nighttime, you can see we get these particle effects being emitted out of here for the exact constellation shape. And so what we can do is put this in our offhand and then pull the astral relays into, making sure I'm not getting attacked by a spider that I hear, but put the astral relays into our main hand, and we're just gonna simply come around and put these down on all the different blocks that are emitting these different purple particles. Okay, so once you have all the astral relays properly placed down, you will get this super cool visual effect that essentially looks the same as the constellation outline in your astral tome or in the nighttime sky, indicating that you are in fact going to be attuned to the correct constellation and letting you know that you are good to go. And you can also see that you'll start getting these really cool green particles being emitted out of the attunement altar, and these parts of it start floating around in midair. And that means that you are good to step on this, and if you are not attuned to anything, you will become attuned to this constellation. So I just love how this looks. It's absolutely awesome. Um, but when we step on here, we will get a really cool sort of cinematic effect. So you can see right here, we get some pretty intense music and a pretty cool 
visual effect to go along with it, this does take a decent chunk of time. So just be warned that you're going to be standing here for a little bit. Um, it's mainly just because that as you progress later in Astral Sorcery, anything that requires Starlight Crafting or stuff like this is actually going to take a decent chunk of time. Uh, and we're getting kind of these little blips, I don't even know, of like visual bugs, I assume because of how the cinematic is done. But you can see that we are there, getting all these particles forced into us. Um, and there we go. So we made the advancement, I can see the light, and now we have been attuned to the Visio constellation. So if we open our Astral Tome, we can see we now have a Perks tab, and this is going to be the passive tree that resembles very much the Path of Exile skill tree and uses some of the same names and Perks as it, so it's definitely based off of that if you've ever played that game before. Um, but, as you can see with the different starting areas, and we'll go over this more in depth in a future episode, but we are starting in this area, all the constellations have their own starting area, and you're told how you can gain experience in the bonus you get, so we get 10% increased movement speed, and we gain experience by running around. Other ones, you gain experience by taking damage, gain experience by placing blocks, and as you level up, you get more points to spend in here for different perks. And you can see we have one available point right now, and the level on the upper left-hand corner, if we start running around, we are gonna get XP. Now it requires more and more XP to level as you go up, and that's what allows you to unlock more perks. So if you're someone like me that just ends up running around, oh, and we've got some friends over here, but if you're someone like me that just likes running around aimlessly while you do nothing, then it's gonna be really easy to level up at least the Visio Constellation. So another reason why I picked that one is just because it's super easy to level up. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode and found it useful. Let me know what constellations you guys think uh, are best to be attuned to or what one you guys went with. Obviously, there are probably better ones if you're playing in a mod pack and you want to make sure you're not dying to overpowered mobs. But for me, I figured it'd be pretty cool to run around pretty fast. Pretty much be Usain Bolt in Minecraft. Why not? Um, but again, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you later.